when we're looking at data, we're usually looking to see if there's some sort of relationship that exists between the two. And then if there is, we're going to try to come up with some sort of an equation or model for the data so that we can make predictions for the future. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to find a linear, quadratic, or cubic model for a data set. Right, we're going to start out with finding a linear model. You'll notice there are some directions on the screen right now, and then there's an example which I'm going to read. In an experiment, students measured the speed in meters per second of a falling object t seconds after it was released. The results are given in the table. And then this asks us to find a linear model for the data. Before we actually get entering the data, we do need to make sure that we've decided which um, variable is going to be our L1 and which one's going to be our L2. We're going to let t be our L1 because that's going to be our independent variable. And then we're going to let s, how long it's been in the air, or at the speed at which it is, be our L2 because that one depends on how long it's been in the air. So now I'm going to switch over to my graphing calculator, hopefully here. Alrighty, and we are ready to go. The first thing that we do need to do is enter that data that was on that screen. So remembering from what we did before, I'm going to go to Stat Edit, and you'll notice all of my information is already in there. Good for me. So my information is in there. If you need to take a second to enter that information, go right ahead. And then from here, we'll go ahead and quit out there. So we'll go ahead and do second mode for quit. Now we're going to go ahead and do that linear model. So following the directions, we're going to go to stat. We're going to arrow over to calc. And then we're going to pick the lin regression because that's a linear regression. You can either arrow down to it or you can just press option four. And notice it says lin reg. Because we can do some special features on our calculator, we're going to specify which lists that they're coming from. Our information is coming from list one and list two. So we're going to let our calculator know that. So we're gonna do second one to get L1 on the screen and then press comma and we'll do list two, which is second two and then comma. The next thing that we're going to do, because we're gonna be doing a couple different um, equations for this one, we're going to actually store this information into a y equals, so it will graph the equation for us when we're done. So to get to y1, we're going to go to VARES, which I believe stands for variables, and we're going to go over to y VARES, and then we're going to pick one, which is function, and then we're going to pick option one, which is y1. So now notice it shows that it's going to show it in y1 for us. So we can go ahead and press enter, and you'll notice that it does give us that um, formula. You'll notice it says y equals ax plus b, so all we have to do is enter the a value that it gave us, and then also enter the b value. So let me now switch back over to my PowerPoint here. So the linear model that we found, it said y equals, but we know that our y was s this time, so it's going to be s equals 9.7, and instead of x we'll use t, plus 0.4. So there's my linear model. The second question, it says, how well does the model fit the data and why? That has something to do with the R value, which we're going to look at right now. And if you'll notice on your screen, we do have an R value. You notice we also have an R squared value. R, of course, is just the square root of that. The closer that R is to one or negative one, the better fit the, date, the model is for the data. So you'll notice that we have an R value of 0 0.99933, which is very close to one. So if we go back over to our notes, how well does the model fit the data? I'm going to put extremely well, and my writing is so nice on that one. And the reason is, is that R is equal to 0 0.99933, which is very close to one. And we've now found that linear model. So we are good to go. All right, the next thing that we are going to do is find a quadratic model. You'll notice it's the exact same question. This time it's just asking us to find a quadratic model. So going over to our calculator, click here. Okay, we can go ahead and just quit out of that, I guess, if we want to. All right, and then um, this time it's asking us for that quadratic model. We already have our information in there, so we can go ahead and just get ready to do our model. We can go right over to Calc. And then we can go down to quadratic regression, which is option five. And then again, we would like it to know, our calculator to know that we're gonna use list one and list two. So we'll do second one to get list one up there and don't forget that comma. 
and then we want list two, so second, list two, and then comma, and then we do want it to put store information into a y equals screen. Again, so I'm going to go to vars, and I'm going to go over to y vars again, and function. This time, instead of picking y1, I'm actually going to pick y2, because then it will store my linear equation in y1, and it will store my quadratic equation in y2, and I actually can use both of them then. So that's what I'm going to do. And then on my screen, you'll notice I do get a new formula, and we can look at it says y equals ax squared plus bx plus c this time, and it does give, give us an a, b, and c value to enter in. And then notice this time it just gives us an r squared value, um, so we'll have to square root that to actually get our r value when we go to say how well does the model fit the data. So let me go ahead and switch this back over to my answer screen. When it said to find a quadratic model for the data, we're going to have s, whoops, S equals, the A value was negative 0.014 T squared plus 9.757 T. That was the B value that it gave us. And then the C value was 0.371. So that would be the quadratic model. And then it says, how well does the model fit the data and why? If you remember, the R squared was equal to 0.99866. To get the R value, we're just going to take the square root of that. And when we do that, we get 0.999 approximately. And so how well does that model fit the data? Again, that model also fits extremely well. And I'll put extremely well, and it's because that R value is very close to 1. Please remember that it, if R is close to negative 1, it's also a good fit. The results are just going down instead of up. Okay, <coughs> if you are going to find a cubic model, let me just go ahead and show you just real quick. I'm not going to do an example of a cubic model because it really is just the same. The only difference is going to be when you go over to Calc, you'll notice that option six is a cubic model. So you can really pick whatever model they ask you to find and then you have it. So hopefully you should now be able to find a model for your data set.